what I got. She showed up this morning. How awesome is this? Yeah, just at your front door without a warning. It's like, yeah. I'm in like, um, what is it? Like, uh, I'm like in shock that I get like a celebrity here. It's, it's really Oh, cool. such a celebrity. You're yeah. the celebrity, man. No, 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 I'm not. But I want to take this time because she has a unique ability to be consciously aware of her disease, but then more importantly, consciously aware of the blessings that come with it. Which I am not good at doing that. I am not, right? I'm but you're just, getting better every day. I hope I am. I pray I am and I try. But I, lately I've been getting a lot of messages from people that are very depressed or they contemplated suicide. Um, how do I know? I've been there. Um, so have I. Been there. Unfortunately, it's very true. So as we're talking, you know, I wish we had the video on before because she is such... Well, she has the training, number one, which is really cool. But she has this huge ability to look at things through a different lens and to anticipate, uh, exacerbate the healing. I um, mean, we learned about exacerbations, but there's another way, exacerbation, exacerbation, yeah, healing. in a good way. In a good way. Um, so, um, which I just lost my train of thought, but we were talking about uh, uh, blessings. Yeah. And I'm um, trying to share with y'all since we're in down south. Um, what, what, I'm not, I'm not a southern the New Yorker right. and the Philly girl yeah, are down exactly. south right now. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of want her to share her story with you and us. And then we could kind of get maybe dig a little deeper into uh, appreciating this thing we call MS or appreciating this thing we call disease and how through that. The healing is going to continue. Um, Michelle Ackerman, I believe, kind of woke me up the other day. It's uh, like, you know, I had my, my concussion. And she reminded me that it's not all about the food. Huge portion of the food. Walls, huge portion. But wow, I think maybe even more huge is this and this. Well, I agree. And um, for any of you that don't know, I, I do a tour. Um, I tour all over the country living with strangers and... Um, not everyone has MS. Um, they have all kinds of issues. And one of the things that I think is the most shocking when I live with people is for them to realize that food was the last piece of my puzzle. Um, although a very important piece of my puzzle, it is not what I credit for the reason why the, uh, the level of healing that I've had. And the reason um, I believe I am considered one of the most healed people in the world with MS using diet and lifestyle is because the first thing I was doing was I've always moved my body. I've been moving my body since I'm 18 years old, pretty much every single day. So I was the psycho mom that dropped the kid off at school and would interval train on the track. So she'd like look out her window and be like, there's my mom, rain, sleet, or snow out there. I had a gym off my bedroom. I'd hit the gym hard every day. Um, I've just always been moving. So movement has been a huge part. I also had uninterrupted physical therapy from the day I was diagnosed until about five years ago. So. I not only was moving, oh, this Kena. I not only was moving, uh, hi, Kena. I not only was Kena moving. Kena and here, too. She's also Oh, awesome. nice. Yeah. Um, I not only was moving, I may have been moving toxically, but I've always moved my body. Then the second thing is, is I went back to school and got a BA in psychology and a master's in psychology, and I studied narrative therapy because one of the things that I realized was I didn't have gratitude. Um, I also didn't really like myself, um, and I also wasn't able to find joy in my life, even though, hey David, even though I um, was living the American dream, I came from a drug addicted mom and a PTSD dad uh, who was a World War II hero and was raised, you know, not in a wealthy family at all. I'd say we were middle to lower class. And um, by the time I was 26, I was a millionaire. Um, I did have many homes. I did have live in help. I did wear the gold Rolex. I did wear, was drenched in 10 carats of diamonds every single day, had six cars, had everything that people could ever want. And I was miserable. I was absolutely miserable. I never really liked myself. I couldn't take a compliment. I had a mess this whole time too. Um, 
until MS one day decided that it was going to totally be in charge. And that's when I realized that I was just a shallow shell of someone who, who was living her life based on consumer-driven ideals, societal norms, cultural norms. I'm 100% Italian and very proud of that, but with that comes a lot of pressure. And for me, the real turning point in my healing was loving myself and finding joy and gratitude in each day so that once I added food to the equation and stopped, stopped poisoning my body, the miracle known as me you know, is born. I mean, I don't take any drugs, not a single drug. I don't see any doctors. I don't have a neurologist. I don't take any, do any tests. I do everything all by myself. I don't even pay for physical therapy. Like I do nothing that costs money. Everything that I do is completely on. So, so tell us about it. Now you're diagnosed with MS and a brain tumor. Like, like break it down for us. Uh, first I was told, I, I got married to my high school sweetheart and six weeks after we got married, I had the hepatitis vaccine um, because I was a respiratory therapist and my job required that I get that. It was the third shot and the next day I woke up and I couldn't feel the left side of my body. They told me um, pretty much right away after a CAT scan that I had an inoperable brain tumor. So for six months, um, I thought I was dying. Uh, I was seeking a lot of other opinions and finally found a doctor in Philadelphia who had heard of uh, MRIs because they were new. And I had an MRI and then a spinal tap and then I was diagnosed with MS. They told me never to have children and never to be in the sun. Well, I lived at the beach my whole life, so that wasn't gonna work. And I was newly married and wanted to be a mom, so I decided, well, I'm not gonna listen to them and I'm gonna get pregnant. And um, actually getting pregnant with my daughter put me into remission for almost 11 years. And during that time, I traveled the world building international technology companies and was very successful and thought that they didn't even know what what was going on with me because they missed I you know first they told me I was dying then it was MS and then told me never to get pregnant I got pregnant I had my daughter I went into remission I was like they don't know anything um, I did uh, join the board of the National MS Society I did take disease modifying drugs I did tour the United States as part of the National MS Society touting disease modifying drugs um, I did everything the doctors told me I always did PT I always worked out um, I thought I was happy. I thought I had a great life because I never had to worry about money and I had a lot of power and status, but I didn't really like myself. I could never accept a compliment. You didn't like yourself. No, I really, I just was a workhorse. I just worked all the time and felt like if I could just give to other people, maybe that would help me feel better about the person that I was. But you kind of, in order to really give of yourself, you have to like yourself and know that you're worthy of giving. Define like yourself because that's, that's a concept that I've heard you say, I've heard, I've read it in, in many books, like, like, love yourself. Like, try to break that down. Okay, a well, bit. a lot of people see following the Walls Protocol or working out or meditation as, um, especially in the face of illness, that they have to do this, they're being deprived. You know, it's bad enough I'm sick, now I have to eat a certain way, and they tell me I have to meditate and I have to move my body, like, I don't want to do that because I only right. have to do that, you know, because I'm sick and it's like, Correct, yes. I don't, and I don't feel deprived with food. Like I love myself so much that like I would never poison myself. And awesome. once I knew that what I was eating was poison, awesome. Awesome. I would never do that again. And Dr. Walls pointed out to me that I was a toxic worker outer person because one time, I don't remember why she happened to talk to me on July 5th and the day before, I was so excited because I rode my bike for the first time in many years. And I was like, Dr. Walls, I rode my bike yesterday five miles to a barbecue and I didn't fall over and I didn't have balance issues or anything. And she was like, that's great, V. And how do you feel today? And I was like, um, I can't move. My IT bands are killing me. And she's like, well, then you can't work out. And I'm like, no, 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 I, I, I did it. I, I didn't have any problems riding my bike. And she's like, no, but if you can't walk the next day, then you can't ride your bike five miles. And I... Okay, so this leads into a lot of the people here, even David, and I'm going to call you out on this, David, because I he called out perfectly what I feel. I feel this shame, like like I've done something wrong. Look at me, I can't overcome a mess. I can't overcome disease, and you feel this horrible sense of shame. I know it's not right. I know it's probably dysfunctional, but this is what goes through. I think a lot of our heads. Well, let me tell you something. I got to tell you, my friend, I don't know how you could feel shame because I go into many people's house and you have 
an amazing loving wife, you have a beautiful home, Absolutely. you have five great kids, you have a great head on your shoulder, yeah. you have a friend here right now who has said that she turned her life around being inspired by you guys. I don't know, you made, you changed the dental industry when you were practicing, like, I don't know what you have shame about. I think that maybe it's societal norms defining that a, right. a person should be able to yes. walk and yes. take care of themselves. You know what? Yeah, well, I think you're more of a man than most. So I think that we have to stop the societal norm and we have to look through life based on the lens yeah. that works for us. I grew up military, like you got to man up, you got to be tough. And well, you have nothing. manned up because look at what you built. Look at what you built. You have a, a loving wife. I mean, your kids are adorable. They're, they're youngest. I'm sitting here. She's like the cutest little thing from the oldest all the way down. Every person with MS I've ever met is, is an amazing story. I'm so humbled by every, everybody. You know, that, that I'm not so unique. There's like Dave is out there and Kane is out there and Tony and, and even Karen. Like they, they have these amazing stories. You, I mean, like this amazing wealth, but yet we still feel down about nothing you know well and I think you know like I was telling you earlier you know I think that most people that have MS or a lot of autoimmune stuff are type A overachievers and that was one mm -hmm. of the first things I ever said to Dr. Walls yeah. when I met her I'm like you need to do a study on type yeah. A overachievers because yeah. we all have MS yeah. everyone I met absolutely and they they got so much in their basket and then nothing up here right you know because they've just given it all and they're just destroyed I mean, I mean we both talked about like I worked for five years and only ever took two days off. You talked about how you'd get home from work at 11 and they'd have to carry your briefcase in because you couldn't even do that. Yeah. I, I think that what happens is, is that type A overachievers tend to be defined by a lot of societal norms yes. and we put extra pressure on ourselves. So it's gonna take Makes somebody, sense. Makes sense. it's gonna take something like MS to like yeah. make us pay attention. Like, hello, we're gonna stop you from like physically moving until right. you need to, until you can realize that like your role yeah, is Yeah, like you said, down. a little tap on the shoulder, not work for you, doesn't yeah. work for me. I need like a punch in the face. <laughs> like, well, literally, I mean so much so that you had to tip your wheelchair yeah, the other day. Yeah, Michelle mm -hmm. like, made it very clear to me. Hey, and Jessica. I had the same thing happen. Um, I was, you know, I lived in Venice Beach, California when it was voted, before it was voted the hippest street in America. And there was a restaurant there called Jelena, which people wait forever to get a reservation. It's one of the hardest places to get into. And I could walk in there at any time at one point in my life. And Jelena had their employee party and I got invited to their party because I like live there. And I was very unhealthy at the time and not doing well. And I fell flat on my face and it literally, destroyed my body for like three and a half years it, it took me down really hard and that was when after that I locked myself in the house because I knew that really? I couldn't I just couldn't as in not like, like exclude yourself you I did you really other than um, my daughter and like appointments that even I with had all to your do. training you knew that, that that was not good no you did it yeah and I had to like check myself I had to lock myself in the house and dedicate myself to me a hundred percent. I had to stop the, the, the societal and cultural norms and I had to be comfortable with being ostracized if that's what was going to happen. You know, it's funny. Denise has just chimed in. I, I have so much respect for her. She's a black woman who uh, an incredible lawyer, has an incredible head on her shoulders and she's so hard on herself. So Type hard, A. You know, yeah. and, and just like I have so much, I would like, I would love my daughters to like know her. Because you know, like walls, she's out there doing. It. Like you know, I met that one dentist from Sweden. That woman, like these are the ones that are just the pioneers are just you know. I yep. love it so much. So it, as you're saying, all right. So I know people are probably getting tired of hearing this, but food, food. It's all we talk about with the walls protocol, food. But that's not the entire protocol, right? No, that was my last piece. So um, and and even that, I still continue to biohack. You know, so I started the Walls Protocol before she had a Facebook page, before she had a book. All she had was the TEDx, and um, you know, I had great results. I mean, I, as far as I know, I think I'm the most healed Walls warrior that there is in the world because I, I don't so. take any drugs, yeah. and um, and I'm not anti-drug. Please know that I am not anti-drugs. I just don't take any drugs because I don't need to for the treatment of MS. I do use cannabis. If you consider that a drug, then I do use that, and I take supplements. Um, but my drug is, I go to bed at 8 o'clock. I wake up between right. 3 and 4. I do yoga to the sunrise. I use near-infrared sauna. I dance every morning. 
because it makes me happy and it lets me know what I need to do on the yoga mat. I hula hoop, I laugh, I have joy. Oh, I look yeah. in the mirror. I, it took me a year of uninterrupted work of standing in front of the mirror naked and not criticizing my body. Awesome. awesome. Because I used to Throw look the in the scale mirror. Away. Yeah, I used to look in the mirror and be like, you have freckles, you have cellulite. You don't have three yeah. holes in your legs, so they're not perfect. Like all I this talk? stuff. Oh, I was you talking know? about you, Karen. I, I physically can't look in the mirror for very long because you, you're like, you, like. It's you, hard. Well, I right? look in the mirror with loving eyes now, and I wear every wrinkle and everything on my body as like a badge of honor. Like, yeah, see this? Because I'm 54 years old and I earned this. Yeah, exactly. And my stomach looks a little weird because awesome. I gave birth. <laughs> and you know what? I'm, I'm proud so of awesome. this, you know? Because of television and all that. You know what? Daryl, the um, fitness what? explorer. Fitness we love explorer. Daryl. I love Daryl. He was telling me he did this photo shoot and they wanted him to be on the cover of this magazine. So they brought him in. They're like, oh, yeah, you're good, but not quite good. So they brought in this guy that's like chiseled, like just ripped and everything. So they made him the color. And so they took all the pictures with him. And then he said he looked at the pic at the at the, the magazine and they even photoshopped him to make him look better. This guy was like an Adonis. So wow. society is telling us this nonsense. It is and, nonsense. And we're buying into it. And the women it with is. the, the yeah. skinniness yeah. and that we want to be skinny or do you want to be strong and healthy? Right. Am I strong and healthy? You want yeah. to and I was from Philly, so I literally was like working girl. I had my hair teased up really long, my eyeshadow, six different colors, all the way up, tons of makeup, and literally I was masking myself because I thought I needed that to, to be attractive to other people now. No. I show up at most houses like looking like I just rolled out of bed. <laughs> Clearly, I don't pay attention to my hair. I don't even have, actually, it's gonna get cut because it's too long right now. Um, but the other thing... So you're making a beautiful example. Yeah. Because us, all of us, I mean, we're just kind of like just trying to make it, and you're living it. So that's just so it's such a. Great and I'm a example. minimalist. You know, um, everything I own fits in a red Fiat. I have only seventy possessions total, counting jewelry, shoes, everything. And I live in community and of service to the community. So See, Dawn's writing. Thank you for making my heart happy today. It was much needed. I mean, I, I know exactly what she means. I wake up some days and I sit at the edge of my bed and I'm just like, I'm not even happy about the day. I'm like. This day is going to be A G L L, but it's not. No, it's not. It's joyful and community. Like Ron and I have known each other online for I'd say a couple years now. I feel like, or at probably, least almost probably. about two years. I remember the first video that I ever saw of you. It's so inspirational. And then we finally got to meet face to face at Dr. Wall's seminar. And there's a group of us from that yeah. seminar that uh, have really okay. formed a very large bond. Yeah. And Amazing. I got to say Amazing. that having that community is also a huge boost huge. for all of us. Because one thing I never wanted to do, my wife's like, oh, you gotta join a support group. Well, I didn't want to join I a group that was like, oh, <laughs> they're gonna all pity party, we're all gonna cry about MS. And so I was afraid of that. But then I went to the protocol and I met people like uh, Diane, Paleo Boss Lady, and Kena, and Tony, and geez, I can make David, a list. Of, uh, uh, so many, yeah. So many. And all these people were amazing people. And nobody, nobody was sad. Nobody was like, oh, what was me? Everybody's like, what are we going to do? We're going to like tough it up. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And they all had amazing stories. So no, no, I, I, not a pity party. Not and it's funny because you asked me, you know, uh, we have, uh, I have a friend, uh, Trevor Wicken. Hi, Bobby, who does the MS gym. And everyone asked Trevor, like, why did you pick the MS gym? Because he's a neuromuscular specialist. Yes. And his response is really amazing because he's trained athletes, I mean, professional Olympians, like all kinds of stuff. And he's like, because people that have MS are warriors and show up ready to work and ready to do what they need to do. And that's what I've seen. So I think we all can be warriors by taking the latest drugs. I'm not anti-drug like you said either, but I am, I am anti-drugs that don't work. So am so, I. So we, we could take drugs and we could be warriors like that. We could get sick. Or we can start to take um, our lives in our own hands and start to move forward, our mental lives. Are, you know, Dr. Walls an interview the other day, she's getting a little bolder as, as he gets older, but mm. she's like, my diet is my disease modifying drug. You know? It is. That's it. I'm like, wow, that's a beautiful thing. But that's almost like her heresy to say right now, because pharmaceuticals, lawyers, and all this stuff. But you know what? It is what it is. And so we could take the drugs and we could hope and pray, um, which we still need to hope and pray. But we could right. also do with food and, 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 and possibly uh, mental. Well, for me, the drugs were I was a victim in waiting. So I was taking all these medicines. I had seven 
exacerbations on beta serum. I was on beta serum for 19 years uh, and, and Avonex. Um, I, and it didn't stop any MS symptoms from getting worse. So I just basically was injecting with something and sitting there waiting for MS to take whatever it wants. Now that I use diet lifestyle in my mind to heal my body, when like when I have a symptom, I just go in my bag of tricks and I know exactly what I need to do. I'm not a victim to MS. No. MS isn't in control, you, I'm in you've control. You've taught me that, you've taught me that. And I felt like a victim and I also lived a fear-driven life until about five years ago. When yeah. fear, when fear, fear dictates life. Wow. your life, nothing wow. good comes out of it. Wow. Joy wow. dictates my life. I wake up every day joyful, like so joyful it's ridiculous. Fear-driven life, wow, that's profound. Let me tell you something from the medicalist perspective. There's a doctor out there. His name is Tommy, Tommy Woods. He, he grew up in Iceland. But he talked about the, 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 the drugs, the MS drugs. And they're not bad. But all right, so you have a tree, right? The tree's out there of all these branches. Well, the MS drug may take one branch of the tree and may treat one symptom, but leave 99 other ones. So the whole idea of the protocol is I'm not saying drugs are bad and you shouldn't do it, but it's, it's only solving one tiny little part of the problem. But the, the foundational, the, the functional problem is still existing. So you can chop down the little leaves off the tree, or you can cut the tree down. I say cut the tree down. I uh, yeah. You know, cut if, that if it, tree down. If, if it's a problem, then we got to hit everything. So that's that's why I love that Diane's here, Paleo Boss Lady, talking about because she's she's got so much of it. I think I got the food part down pretty good. I lack that. So but I, but I, you're getting better. I've seen a lot of change in you, and I know that you know that it, it takes time. You know, I didn't get here overnight. I've had MS for 30 years, so I've had 30 years to figure out how to become a miracle. And the one thing is, is I always have believed in myself, and if I put my mind to something, I do it. That's it. Like it's just awesome. done. Awesome. And I feel like a lot of us Type Bayers, you know, that is the way it goes. And you know, I have to tell you that if you see any of this as, like, I'm grateful I have MS. Like, if the heavens opened up That's tomorrow incredible. and right. said, you can play it any way you want, I'd be like, I want, I want it all the same. Because MS gave me gratitude. MS has given me joy. MS has helped me to have value in friendships, in community, in the sun. I mean, it's a beautiful day here in Atlanta. I just went outside and I was like, this day's gorgeous. I can't believe I get to share in this beautiful day. I'm in a house with five kids, like I love that energy. I'm like, I can't believe I get to be in a house with five kids yeah, right now, know. you know, You're so much. You, time. you know, just to touch base real quickly, and I don't know why, I know we're taking a lot of time, but you know, there, I used to work in a hospital, I used to work, um, I don't know, 80 hours a week, but there was a, another gentleman there who was a plastic surgeon. He was from California. He was probably one of the most plastic, best plastic surgeons I ever met. He had cars, he had money, he, um, he, he was incredibly rich, and, um, one day he went outside with a shotgun and, and did what he did. But he had everything, right? But he had nothing. Right. And that's the thing, right? That was me. I had, by society standards, everything. I only wore designer clothes. My coats cost me $5,000. I literally had 10 carats of diamonds drenched on my body every single day. I had award-winning businesses, homes, beach homes, you name it, and I was miserable. Now, I have, by society standards, I don't have a house. I live out of my car. I only have 70 possessions. I live at poverty, but yet but it's freedom. Right? I'm so joyful, and my blood work gets better and better. Really, MS gets better and better. That's so, awesome. so, That's so awesome. You know, I think that we can live a society-defined life, or we can live our own life. And I think when you start living your own life, then you you don't feel less than because maybe you can't walk good that day, or because you right. have Jesus. to ask your kid to help you do something. You are being a father to your kid, and your kid has love. My parents, my mom was such a junkie, I didn't ever really know if there was love. I mean, your dad's beating the crap out of everyone. Mm -hmm. You don't see that as love, you know? Yeah, but, yep, been there. you know, they could walk and move their body freely, but they weren't, didn't do such a good job as parents. So it really is, what's the definition of mm -hmm. what makes you... You know, I, you know, before Carolyn and I got married, and I knew I had MS, and I went and asked the MS nurse, she's... MS nurse. She was a nurse working with Dr. Larry Jacobs, who invented Avenue, uh -huh. right? And so I said, I can't get married. I have MS. She goes, Well, I know a lot of jerks out there without MS that are married. That's so, what I'm saying. So she's like, MS oh, yeah. doesn't define us. No, it, it's not. It doesn't make us any less of a person, or lupus, or RA, or 
you know, anxiety or bipolar or whatever it Crohn's is. Crohn's or whatever, yeah. Whatever, whatever it is. It is can't what everything. defines us is is who we are. Are we love? Do we give love? Do we have community? Do we ha- bring joy to other people and to ourselves? And the way you bring joy to other people is by you got to like yourself first. And you have to do whatever it takes to be able to look in that mirror, even if it's just affirmations saying to yourself. Like Dr. Walls has us do affirmations for our mitochondria. That's so awesome. I want people to do affirmations where they look in the mirror and say, you are worthy of good health. You are beautiful. Joy is within your grasp. My narrative is not defined by my body. Okay. It is defined by my so mind. Give us a little bit of a pathway there. So, all right, all right, how about this? You get up in the morning, what do you do? I dance. Okay. So you get up out of bed, you do a dance. Well, I get up out of bed and I make my Bulletproof coffee and I put on Pandora. Okay, and what do you listen to? Well, today I, I switched around. I started with Sam Smith, then I went to Cat Stevens. I was all over the board. And Cat then I was with Mayor Cat Hawthorne. Cat Stevens makes me cry, but anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday was the Jackson 5. So I get up and I just, while I'm making coffee, I just start moving around so that I can decide if I, what my workout needs to be. And it also makes me happy to dance, so... Um, that's what I do first. So you, so your first thing's not running your supplements, not doing. It's kind of like doing getting happy. Upstairs, yeah. Work. Interesting. All right. So now you're done dancing. All right. Tell me about. Med- and then I sit down and um, and I drink about half a cu- half of my coffee and I check on the computer a little bit. Okay. And then um, after that, I meditate. So I'll do. I've been using Insight Timer, which is yeah, a free app. Yeah, find meditation first because that is such an abstract concept, which. Which I talked to Deepak Chopra. He says it's not an abstract concept. Just do it. It's, you don't need it to be. I have to use. I've been using speech. guided meditations for okay. the last year. I've had a hard time since our new president. You okay. know, staying with using quieting my mind. All so right. I use. Um, yeah, I stop use. Stop watching it, the news. I don't. Yeah, watch I don't watch. The, I don't do anything like that. So I use guided meditation, which usually I'll do like a morning, just a, a simple morning meditation. From Insight. It's an app. Is yeah, it's an okay. Insight timer. It's okay. a free app, and then how um, long? Um, I usually could go anywhere from five minutes to twenty minutes. All right. So do you five to twenty? Okay. Do you think about anything, or you're trying not to think? No, about No, I it? try and I try and listen to what they're saying on uh, the guided meditation, excellent. and that helps me to quiet my mind because I've had too much uh, time meditating where my mind wasn't quiet. So the monks would always tell me. The whole thing is quieting the monkey mind. Our yeah. mind's like always like he's like no, you have to stop. So all right, so you listen to that. They they, they kind of go through some. Yeah, they something. well the, like the um the one I I've been doing this week, which I discovered living with someone is seven affirmations for the day, and I like the affirmations. So I listen to the affirmations and then I repeat them in my mind. And there's music playing in the background, and we're doing some breath work. So you're it's like gardening. I'm really paying attention to what. The guided meditation is so my mind isn't going around and around. Awesome, because that's my problem. Then I also hear you tell me that in the sometimes you do like a gratefulness meditation. Yeah, I do. I, I, there's um, Inside Timer has all different kinds of meditation, so it's whatever you're looking for that day or that moment. Because gratefulness eliminates anxiety, no? Because for me, I have gratitude. I don't really gratitude, have gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah, I don't really have anxiety anymore. I used to have crippling anxiety, and me and Xanax were really good friends, but yeah. I don't. I don't have that. At all. Matter of fact, I told my daughter, I guess it was about this time last year, um, I said to her, wow, it's been like over a year since I've had any anxiety or even a need for Xanax. And I wouldn't leave the house. Not not that I would, because I would fear that I would have anxiety. Um, While you're out. You know, yeah, so I'd always out. have something. But um, not, V needs her own app for meditation, music, and affirmations. Thank you. Um, but um, Yeah, she does. She needs to write a book. Well, that that's going to come when it's supposed to. Okay, I know so, that okay. there's going to be a book someday. I have a feeling that well, but go ahead. Um, and going. then you know, and then I get on the yoga mat and I do yoga and uh, self myofascial release. And today I was on there for about an hour and fifteen minutes. But she's doing modified yoga, so she isn't doing like all the work. No, I'm not all, a pretzel. Like the... I have a torn meniscus, so I can't mm-hmm. flow from one pose to another. I can't do warrior one. Um, so my yoga is like a lot of hip openers. Um, a lot of, because I'm like this all the time, uh, you know, a lot of core strength, a lot of glute strength so that I can lift my legs with my glutes and not my legs. Um, 
you know, that's that's kind of, you know, what I do. And then I ball roll. Absolutely. No, and diet th- totally helps with anxiety. We're, 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 Pat, we're talking about the diet and the Wallace Protocol. Absolutely. 150%. Yeah. But, but now we're just kind of moving on to the mental part of it, I think, in which we all struggle with. And just an FYI, I know that you're almost out of battery power, so if we shut off, that's why. Um, So then I work out on the mat and then do the ball rolling with music playing. And like, if I'm on the mat an hour and a half, I do get up and go to the ladies' room. I might make another cup of coffee. So it's not like... So you're not like putting yourself in this box. No. You're like, this is party. You're loving yourself. mm -hmm, Like this morning... And yesterday morning, I've been doing my near infrared sauna while I'm doing yoga. Mm -hmm. So at one point today, I was like, well, I just want to have my feet in front of the near infrared sauna for 10 minutes. So in the middle of doing my workout, I decided to just sit still for 10 minutes with my feet in front of the near infrared sauna. Because normally I do it at night before bed, but this morning I wanted to do it in the morning. So you're not thinking about, oh my God, I got to go shopping. I got to like get this. I'm thinking about, I'm so grateful that I can move freely in my body right now and that I get to give myself this time. I have candles lit, I have essential oils going, you know, and I was excited because I knew I was going to come and hang out with you. Folks, all the research showing when we quiet our mind, when we quiet those EMG in our brain, magic things happen, healing happens. It can't happen when we're, we're stressed. And we're freaked out and we're thinking about what the next deadline is going to yep. be or this, that way. It cannot happen. So, you know, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not good at it. V is. But listen to what she's saying. I mean, it is, it is a big deal. It is true. It's the key. I think your mind holds the key to healing. So She when does I'm, travel with her sauna. Tara. I do travel with my sauna. It's a single light unit. It's by Sauna Space, which is all one word. You can check them out. If it's something, um, just so that you know, I don't make any money uh, doing the work that I do. But I do have a 25% discount code for Sauna Space. So, yeah, and again, they're not paying me for this. Um, it's Paleo Boss. So if you think you like it and you want to buy it, just put in Paleo Boss at the checkout and you'll save 25%. Listen, for someone, for me to travel with this in my little Fiat, you know it's really an important part of my wellness program. Um, I use it three times a day, um, and it, it's 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 something that I never thought was available to me because I have uh, body t- temperature sensitivity. But the single light unit, um, Brian, the the founder of Sauna Space, invented for people specifically with heat sensitivity because he has heat sensitivity right. from an autoimmune issue, and it actually is helping me become more heat tolerant. I've been using it since September, if that gives you an idea how long I've been using it and that I'm already having positive. Actually, we are going to do a Facebook Live, me and the owner of Sauna Space, so that he can share this protocol that he introduced to me at Dr. Wall's seminar because Dr. Wall's told me not to get in the sauna she was worried about. And then he was like, well, I invented this protocol, shared it with Dr. Wall's, and I was like, well, I'll try it, and it's definitely working. So just so you know, that's how I found out about sauna space was from Dr. Terry Walls, and you met him the same time I did. I did, I did, yeah. I did. I totally so I, I got the, um, that was in August, and I got my sauna space in September. Anything else you want to say? Just say I love better. you, and I'm super excited. Love you too. Thank there. you for yeah. coming and being in our home and sharing the, your, your joy and your experience and your energy, and so, you know, we're very, 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 very pleased. And I, I just hope that, uh, just I, I see so much pain out there, and I've been in so much pain. I continue to be in pain, um, but there's a bright side. There's a bright side, and he's tapping it. The bright side's coming more in front than behind. And, yes, you just have to fake it till you make it. I'm, and believe. I'm, I think that's my favorite line: "Fake it till you make it." Because I'm so thick that I have to, and I think a lot of us are the same. Yeah, and we have to get it because we have no choice, right? We have we have family, we have friends. We have children. We have dogs. We got to get this right, otherwise, we're what? What's going to happen? Right. You know? And for anyone that doesn't know, my tour, the Taking It to the Streets tour, is a free tour. So if you would like me to come and live with you and share all the tools that I have, all you have to do is ask. Um, I'm of service to the community, and I've dedicated myself to helping others. So if there's any way that I can help, um, it would be my honor. Awesome, awesome. So, so they can go to your. Um, web page on yeah, uh, you Facebook. Can, you can or, go to Paleo Boss Lady or you can just email me at v at paleobosslady.com and say tell me more about the tour. V at paleobosslady.com. Um, I'm booking, I'm booked all the way until March of 2018 so I'm booking for uh, from March on just so you know. So where next? Um, I'm, I'm in Atlanta until Tuesday and then okay. Tuesday I head to Gainesville, Florida and I'm touring 
in the whole state of Florida until the end of December. Wow. And then I'll be in Texas all of January. Nice, I've been nice. touring since September, and then I get to go back and be a mom to my daughter in February. I'll be in Los Angeles. Good, 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 good. Wow. Good, good. I like though your schedule is through the winter. You're like, yeah, you're I follow better. the weather. Well, I can tell you, I think I'm going to be in Florida every December for the rest of my life because it is awesome. the place to be. That's awesome. Well, yeah, v, I love you too. I love you too. And uh, you know what? Any questions? V, I, we are totally available. Tony's awesome. Tony oh, we got Tony, Kana, Kana David. David. Well, David just started his uh, oh, coaching. And healthy and detour. Healthy detour. You know what? If you guys need some inside help, he, he's got a history, a medical history um, of, uh, of, of treating people. But now he's taking he's what he's He's a chiropractor. He is a chiropractor. He's taking his knowledge now and he's putting it out there. So look at healthydetour.com. And Tony just became Tony's an another NCP. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Good job, Tony. Yay, Definitely. Tony. Yeah, you need help, talk to Tony. Kane is always inspirational. And always Kane is up. traveling around and sharing how she travels. When she's not climbing mountains. Yeah, um, like Mount might, Kilimanjaro, yeah, just, you know, that tiny yeah, little mountain. Yeah, with MS, okay. Right. So when she's not filling propane tanks, she's climbing right. mountains. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just everybody's awesome. And we're just so. kicking it. All right. All right, well, we're going to find out what all the Black Friday sales are because Ron's wife just checked it out for us. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do The hell is Black Friday? <laughs> the kids are like, what do I get for Black Friday? I'm like, you get nothing. There is there's no such thing. It's made well, up. Well, I think there's going to be a Christmas tree coming up here uh, pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, we'll cause, yeah, yeah we the whole Christmas. outside of the house is decorated. This place is lovely. And I'm really honored that you welcomed me into your home. Due to my... Oh, wait. Okay. This is my beautiful wife. Yeah, that's and, beautiful and, and wife. And Karen. <laughs> now, she's responsible for like 90% of that. Yeah, that's Karen. She's been doing a keto work. Um, you know, if we have time, maybe we'll make a little video about working out and fatigue management because that's a big deal. Um, but, uh, but that's... And um, just remember, you know, I worked out because I wanted to beat MS out of me. Now I work out to peacefully... Coexist with MS and respect it. So beautiful, it. so beautiful. You can't beat it out of you, so you might as well join it, right? And just give your body what it needs to Amen thrive. To that. That's awesome. See, you, I, I'm gonna go back, and you have all these like quotes and things you come up with. They're pretty sweet. I've been doing so, this yeah, a long time. You're not gonna beat it out of you, you know. So, you know I wanted to beat it out. I used to be like MS. You are gonna lose because I'm an Italian and I got this. <laughs> well, you know what? I was losing, and now I just lovingly work That's out. Beautiful. You know, That's so and perfect. You know, I, I, it's all love. It's just, I just love myself so much that I don't see, I, I just would never poison myself and I would never not move my body because I've been given the gift to be able to move it. So I'm so you're no longer it. drinking the poison. No, you know, I don't you, drink the poison. You know, I, I No, I, I drink this though. A lot of people think it's poison, but I am addicted, so that's it. Yeah, but it's, you know what, being a dentist, being an oral surgeon, this is like... What?